Good afternoon, everyone. I'm truly honored and, and humbled to have earned your support to be elected as the new speaker of the New York State Assembly. I've been known as a man of few words, so I promise to keep my remarks brief. And this will actually be the longest speech I've ever given. We gather here today during a, term, a turbulent time for this institution. The resignation of the previous speaker has brought about change in the leadership of this House. And this change in leadership will bring about much needed reform. Let me state here today that the members of this legislature are men and women of integrity and honor who come here to serve their districts with the sole purpose of improving the lives of their constituents. Having said that, there's no question that the actions of a few have given cause for cynicism. Through reform and action, we will change the cynicism into trust once again. I want to thank every member who during the past week has given me the opportunity to talk with them and forge a blueprint for the future of the State Assembly. I am particularly grateful to those outstanding members of this body who actively partic participated in discussions about the leadership of the Assembly. I want to recognize Assemblymember Keith Wright. <laughs> Assemblymember Joe Lento. <laughs> Assemblywoman Kathy Nolan. <laughs> and my good friend and Majority Leader Joe Morelli. I have spent all of my legislative career doing what I'm most comfortable with, which is listening before I build consensus and take action. I've listened to my colleagues and to the leaders across the state who understand that our state deserves a government as good as its people. What I hear from this is a call to continue making the assembly the place where we fight for working families. What I hear from them is a commitment to agenda of expanding the middle class, creating good paying jobs, ensuring access to health care, education, housing, and preserving the rights of every New Yorker, no matter their appearance or origin. And most of all, what I hear is that we must settle for nothing less than real, clear reform to make this chamber a place of pride once again. The need for reform in Albany did not begin in the last few weeks. For years now, there's been a call for bringing sunlight to the Capitol. And the time is here for us to act. We need to democratize our legislative process. We need to take advantage of the talent and skills of every single one of our members. You can applaud for that. <laughs> From the most senior member to those most recently elected. We have to reform the way we regu regulate legislators' outside income. We must raise their wages so we can fairly compensate our members as we attract the best and the brightest minds in our state. <laughs> and we have to address the issue of per diem pay. We have to make sure that tax money is spent carefully and transparently. There must be accountability. Never again can there be a question about the integrity of our members or this institution. Through a beefed up steering committee and a newly established policy review and analysis work group, every member will be fully informed and will have a real say on legislation that will come before the assembly. Just as important, we will double down on our efforts to create a, a, a workplace that is safe from harassment. Whether you're a powerful member, part-time staffer, or a volunteer, there will be zero be a zero tolerance policy for those engaged in sexual harassment. <laughs> Complaints will be dealt with swiftly, fairly, and with transparency. And as we find ourselves at a critical juncture, we must maintain our resolve to move our state forward, even as we must reform this institution. 
We have to move quickly to complete the job the people of New York sent us here to do. We must now move to enact an on-time budget that is fair for everyone. We have a minimum, wa minimum wage to raise, a women's equality agenda to pass, a DREAM Act to enact, and a criminal justice system to reform. We have an, env an environment to protect, good paying jobs to create, and children to educate. Because the challenges are great and your spirit is willing, I'm particularly grateful to the trust that you have placed in me to lead this institution. For a Bronx boy who majored in applied math and statistics, this is one probability that I could never forecast. <laughs> I mention the Bronx because of the pride I have in my district and my borough and because I know that I would not stand here today without the very special community that raised me and inspired me to serve. It is It is a community of family and friends who showed me that anything is possible when you work hard, chase after your dreams, and refuse to give in to long odds. Friends, if we have seen even the longest lasting powers move on, even most seemingly immobile structures give way. We do not own this house. We are simply tenants here. And as the present occupants of this chamber, we have a sacred duty to honor its history, improve its standing among our citizenry, and above all else, create a legacy of results that will attest that we left this chamber and our state better than when we inherited it. This is my vision. This is our calling. And this will be an assembly that's stronger than ever and a New York State that's possible for all. And lastly, as I thank my family and my friends and my sisters and my beautiful daughter, Taylor, I cannot help but nod to my parents who are no longer with us but they instilled in me a set of values that have allowed to stand before you today. And on a personal note, I cannot help but note that the, today's second resolution before this House is a resolution honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. His sacrifices, his courage, and his belief in equal rights are the foundation on which I stand today. Thank you, Dr. King, for making this day possible. And thank you again to all my colleagues for the opportunity to meet the challenges ahead. Let's get to work. Thank you and God bless you.